Hi everyone, it's New Jersey Garden. I wanted to do a May, early May garden tour. This area is just right in front of um, the house by the driveway. And it's kind of a weedy area, so I'm trying to fill it in with plants so that I don't have a lot of weeding to do over here. Last summer I planted a lot of Black-Eyed Susans and they're coming back. Um, Black-Eyed Susan, I believe, is a biennial, so the mother plant doesn't come back, but it drops seeds and, you know, it reseeds itself. So I have a mixture of um, Black-Eyed Susan in here with some flocks, some ground cover flocks. And then over here is a cone flower. And on the other side of the garden bed are some peonies. I think I have eight peony plants here that I planted several years ago. Every year they get a little bit bigger. So I'm excited for that. They usually bloom at the very end of May or early June. And then what I did here is I had lost a little bit of yarrow that I had here. So this winter I planted yarrow in the basement and I just transplanted some yarrow. Uh, I believe it's called Colorado Mix. Um, it's a several colors of pink and yellow, um, so that might bloom. It might bloom this year. It's the first year, and it's a perennial. So sometimes with perennials, you don't get a bloom the first year. So we'll see how that does. I also planted from the basement. Um, I grew butterfly weed, and I think it got a little sunburn. I didn't um, harden it off as much as I should have, so. It's looking a little straggly and like sunburned, um, but it might do okay. It's looking alive, so we'll see how that does. This over here is a blanket flower, um, and I also planted some new lavender last summer. So this is one of the new lavender bushes. This is Leatris. Um, there's some more lavender over there, some more blanket flower and I'm excited this year I have lupin I had planted this last year I planted several lupin bushes and a couple of them came back there's one there um, and there's a tiny one right there I don't know if that one will bloom but this year I planted some more lupin seeds so I'm hoping you know, it's, lupin is a biennial, so I'm hoping next summer I'll have more lupin. It's unclear to me if lupin is going to drop its seeds and uh, grow the following year. In the past, I've had to just grow it, every, you know, um, grow it every year that I want it. It doesn't reseed for me. And then over here is a beautiful hot pink clematis, and I can never seem to find the variety of it but I'll show that when that's in bloom that blooms in June then over here there's a little bit of um, Leatris and this is the mailbox right here so in front of the mailbox I planted an herb called soapwort and there's one bloom on it or a couple blooms on it and it will be covered with pink blooms this week and it's a really nice herb. Um, I really enjoy it. it. Apparently you can make soap out of it by crushing the leaves. I tried it once and it didn't work, but um, I guess early settlers used this herb to make soap, which is why it's called soapwort. And then over here I have some yarrow, some more liatris, and some um, blanket flower. There's a lily. Now my lilies out here by the street um, do get eaten by the deer and I have to spray them, especially right after it rains. Sometimes I don't get outside to spray and the deer will come out and eat the lilies. So I do have trouble with lilies. That plant over there is a catmint. It gets quite large. I have several catmints. And then down here I had just planted a little bit of yarrow and some butterfly weed last week. 
Now over here there's more yarrow and there's a tree that we're thinking of digging up. It's a red cedar. Um, I don't know if I'm crazy about it. It We put Christmas lights on it every year but it's a little straggly looking and um, it's okay. I'm just not sure I want it here because it will shade out some plants. I really like sunny gardens so it's getting really big. It started out like almost like a little tiny um, plant um, in the garden and I just relocated it. So it's it was really tiny a couple years ago. It grew really fast. Here is some more Liatris, which is getting kind of hidden by this tree. And then over here I have some brown-eyed Susan, which I really enjoy, and that's also a biennial, so it will drop its seeds every year. And then I'm excited for the peonies over here. Now, I had some peonies that dropped seeds and created new peony plants which is pretty rare. Um, they don't usually do that, but I guess I had left on some seed heads and this peony plant probably won't bloom. It was new last year. Peonies take like sometimes three years to bloom for the first time. And then this peony plant, I think this is its fourth year and I'm finally gonna get some blooms on it. So it'll be interesting to see what variety this is. Um, down here is another brown-eyed Susan and on the ground you can see little tiny brown-eyed Susans what I do is I thin those out and I just keep a few plants for next year so the little plants here won't bloom this year but they'll bloom next year and the larger ones will bloom this year so that's a brown-eyed Susan um, this here is a cone flower they have very strong roots. I want to dig this up and divide it, I, but I need a shovel because the roots are really, really strong. And then over here I planted uh, one of my favorite flowers, which is called Maltese Cross. I had grown these in the basement starting in February, and um, they are looking okay. I think they'll make it. I planted several plants here in this area. And there's another catmint. And then over here is a lilac. Now I've had this lilac for a few years. It almost died on me. And this is the first year it's blooming. I think this is like the fourth or fifth year that I've had it. And it's called a sensation lilac. So I think next year I'll have a lot more blooms. And then next to it I have a crepe myrtle, which always looks like it's dead until mid-May and then it finally starts to leaf out. Um, typically crepe myrtle doesn't grow in this climate. I'm in zone six, but there's one type of crepe myrtle. I think it's called the Zumi or Zuni variety that grows in this zone. This is just a shot of the garden bed from this angle. And then down here I have planted um, some um, blanky flower last year that's coming up. And there's some yarrow that I just planted the other day. This light colored plant is um, a perennial that's been dying out on me the last couple years. I think it's called Carpet of Snow. Um, it's a really pretty plant, but it's dying out on me. And then over here we have another lavender plant that I planted last year. I like lavender because the deer don't go near it. I tend to plant a lot of perennials that are deer resistant. This is Liatris. There's more yarrow, a couple of lilies. I think these lilies are the oriental lilies. And then over here is some more Maltese cross that I planted. And then I also planted some I'm really excited for these peach foxgloves. They got a little sunburned um, from transplanting, so we'll see what happens with those. But I planted a whole row of them right in the front of this garden bed. And then over here, I have this little plant. Um, I think it's called rock cress. 
and it's so pretty. Usually I only get a tiny bit of it, and this year it seems like it's the biggest it's ever been. Um, it just it grows super slowly, and um, it's just a kind of a neat plant. And then over here I have some oriental poppies. This one is called Princess Victoria Louise, next to a cat mint. And then over here I have some white lilies. They're very fragrant. These are oriental lilies. Then I have um, Lady's Mantle right next to it with some more poppies. These are all um, oriental poppies. I had some daisies in this bed, but I started taking them out because they were getting eaten by a beetle or something. They were actually eating the flower petals right off. And then also in this garden bed, um, we got some free plants from our town. Um, this is called Silky Dogwood. I planted a few of them in this garden bed and I think they get pretty big. So I only have like three or four there's another one right there and I think in the fall they have a nice um, reddish color to them and they're supposed to have berries but they did get nibbled on when I first planted them last year they got nibbled on by the deer but they're getting more established now and I may have to take out this old lavender bush it's really um, dying in the center here I think this is its last year and it's too close to the um, silky dogwood anyway, so I think I'm going to pull this out considering I planted a few new lavender plants. And then there's another poppy. And then this is called Basket of Gold Alyssum. It likes to dangle off the side of this wall here. There's another silky dogwood. This is a cat mint plant. This is blanket flower, which is drought tolerant. That's another thing I like to plant. I like to plant drought tolerant plants. This is um, ladies mantle. And then over here, this is a combination of yarrow and a poppy and a lily all next to each other. And then over here, this is the biggest silky dogwood. And then this is one of my favorite plants that I mentioned before. This is called Maltese Cross. It's going to have beautiful red flowers. Over on this garden bed by the side of the garage, I just planted a few Celadoro daylilies. And then there's some forget-me-nots right in front of it. And this year I planted a bunch of a new variety of forget-me-nots that I will be transplanting as soon as I'm able to. Um, they have different leaves, so I want to see if the flowers look different. But I like forget-me-nots, but they, um, when they die, they get like really brown. So sometimes I pull them up because I just don't like the look of the brown leaves. But I do like forget-me-nots in the spring. Over in this garden bed there's a couple junipers and some lilies. And then last spring I planted some sweet williams in a circle and it made this huge mound so I'm pleased with how it looks it really filled in quite nicely and I'm excited for the sweet Williams um, and then next to it are bell flowers that I planted over here I have another lily and a lot of sweet Williams and the sweet Williams I can't believe how far they've come they were really tiny last year and they were really leggy seedlings and I wasn't sure if they were going to make it but they're looking great now and they should be blooming in a couple weeks and they make great cut flowers they're a biennial so I'm hoping they reseed 
And then there's a little um, bellflower here. I sh I'm sorry, I'm calling it bellflower, but it's Canterbury bells is what I meant to say. And then um, there's a little pink lilac shrub that I planted that I got from Costco. It's not supposed to get very big. Over here in this garden bed, I have some day lilies and then I planted some more um, Canterbury bells back here. And these are Asiatic lilies. They'll be pink. And there's a day lily. And then over here there's a lilac that just got into bloom a few days ago. And it died out in the center last year so I had to cut out the center of it. And I wasn't sure if I was going to keep it, but what I'm excited about is it does have a beautiful fragrance. It's called a Sensation Lilac. And um, what I wanted to show you was this year, somehow, I guess because it's a hybrid, we got this pale, pale pink. It's almost like a white color um, coming off one of the branches. So I think that's really nice. And, um, but as you can see, it died in the center and there's a little, I, I had to cut out the center and there's a little um, sucker coming out the bottom. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with this plant. It is very close to the house, so I'm not sure I want the roots damaging the foundation. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with it, but I'll just back up so you can see the blooms. A lot of the blooms are at the top of the plant. It smells really nice. Over here by this little garden shed, there's another Sensation Lilac, and this one's more, a little bit more shaded, um, but the lilacs, and the lilacs are mostly on the top of the plant. But I pruned it last year, so it is looking a little better than it did, and a little more full. When you prune your lilacs, they can look a lot better the next year. They'll look more full. And a trick with lilacs is you really need to prune them immediately after they finish flowering, because they set next year's buds right after they finish blooming. So if you wait to prune your lilac, like I've done in the past, you don't get as many blooms the next year. And I've also noticed when we have colder winters, we have more blooms. Now this over here is the vegetable garden and I'll do another separate video on that but this is the vegetable garden. Over here I have a little side garden under our deck and this yellow plant in front is called Basket of Gold Alyssum and the pink flower is a perennial phlox and I like how they come into bloom exactly at the same time. And then back here is a Princess Victoria Louise poppy. And there are some Johnny jump ups that I planted last year. It's a viola. There's a couple of Canterbury, three Canterbury bells in here. Some more Johnny jump ups. I had some daffodils and a hyacinth in here. And then what I'm excited about are these peonies. I have several varieties of peony plants right under the deck here that bloom really nicely. So that is it for today's tour. Um, welcome all new subscribers and I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a great day.